Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. In this week's video, we're going to be talking about common malfunctions on the AR platform. Now, the AR platform has been around since Vietnam era, and because of its unreliability uh, during the early years of the rifle's use, it kind of got a stigma of being an unreliable weapon system. Anybody who owns a modern AR knows that, that that's pretty much not true, especially if you own a high quality AR. You know that you can run thousands of rounds without a uh, rifle uh, induced malfunction. Uh, ammunition, if the rifle is maintained, is more likely to induce a malfunction than the rifle's uh, design is. However, malfunctions do occur, whether they're ammunition related, uh, they're training induced, or they're just induced by um, the way things occur and when they occur, chance, circumstance, fate, kismet, whatever you want to call it, uh, we need to know how to clear them. We need to know how to clear them fast. So there are three common malfunctions, and then of course there's atypical malfunctions, which I'll also address. But the common malfunctions are a failure to fire, which is you get you know trigger press, no fire. Uh, then you have a double feed when two rounds try to occupy the chamber at the same time. And then there's what's known as brass over bolt, bolt override, or there, I'm sure there's other names for it. I call it brass over bolt. Uh, and that is probably the least likely malfunction you'll experience, but it is possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through those three common malfunctions and show you how I address clearing them. Now the failure to fire is pretty straightforward. I get a click, no bang. The trigger is now dead, but I did get a click. I didn't feel a stoppage in mass in the buffer tube, which is kind of a, uh, a way that you can feel and diagnose. But the trigger helps me diagnose the malfunction. Another thing is now the rifle will not go on safe. Uh, in daylight, it's simple as if I get that click, I can just do a quick rotate and then go through my clearance procedure or out of my peripheral I can see it or because I didn't feel a mass stoppage with the buffer, I'm relatively 100% positively sure, I'd say 90%, 98%, whatever percentage you want to throw on it, that I've, I've experienced a failure to fire. I had a tap, no bang, no ignition, primer strike, maybe it's a bad round, uh, whatever the situation may be. Because it occurred during the cycle of fire, I'm relatively sure that that's the malfunctions I've experienced. Um, the way that they used to teach to clear every single malfunction is sports. It's been a long time since I've used sports because it's a long procedure and there's quicker ways to clear every single malfunction than using the sports method that you may have learned in the military. So if I experience a failure to fire, I've diagnosed it with the trigger because I had a click, no bang, and I cannot put the weapon on safe, which tells me the hammer's down. So I know the hammer fell. Uh, didn't feel a mass stoppage in the buffer tube, so I'm going to push-pull and rack. Instead of tapping, sometimes tapping doesn't necessarily work, especially on if you loaded a 30 round magazine into a closed bolt weapon and you, ch you were able to chamber that first round, the magazine may not have clicked in and sat on that 30 round full magazine. So it may have chambered that first round and the magazine is just kind of hanging in the well. So tapping, again, it'll be tapping against the bottom of a closed bolt and maybe 29 rounds won't do it. This is something you kind of have to test for yourself. But I'm going to push pull rack and if I can reassess and shoot I'll shoot because we don't want to mindlessly train to tap rack bang that's why we don't say tap rack bang anymore but this is push pull rack reassess uh, and I don't want to put a nomenclature on it I don't want to put a, an acronym on it I just want to say push pull rack and then see if your target still needs to be shot um, it doesn't need to be a long drawn out process literally I'm gonna feel that dead trigger I'm gonna push pull I'm gonna rack and I'm gonna bang if the shot is necessary I'm not gonna spend a lot of time dwelling on, okay, does he still need to be shot? I'm gonna know instantly if I still need to shoot the threat or not. It's that simple. Um, can you tap? Yes, if you feel like tapping, that's fine. However, I do see students sometimes in, in classes that they'll try the tap method versus the push-pull method and they'll get another round and then they'll have another failure to fire because the magazine still isn't seated. Um, if you're having relative regular problems with a magazine, go ahead and write training on it and leave it for there. Don't bring it, uh, don't use it for any kind of defensive purposes, duty, occupation, whatever that is. Um, failure to fire is obviously the easiest malfunction to fix, but it's the one that kind of uh, screws people up the most because I've seen some people try to skip that first step and they'll just rack. And sometimes it works, but then that gives you that false feedback of it's gonna work every single time. Whereas sometimes it doesn't work and I see somebody go through three or four cycles and nothing's coming out. They're racking, nothing's coming out because the magazine isn't feeding into the chamber, but it's still in the gun. So push, pull, rack, reassess. If you need to be shooting, shoot.
Now, the next most common malfunction is going to be the double feed. When two objects try to occupy the same place at the same place at the same time. The easiest way to set one up, lock the bolt to the rear, insert a magazine with ammunition, and drop a live round into the chamber. Now, you can reach in there if you want to finesse it, or you can try to feed two rounds in there at the same time, because double feeds present in many different ways. This one would be more of a traditional ferry to extract and then an attempt to feed. So it is technically a double feed because two objects are trying to occupy the same space at the same time, but this is ultimately what you're gonna get. Now, the old method, the method I was originally taught on how to clear this malfunction was I was to lock the, lock the bolt to the rear, rip the magazine, get rid of it, rack three or four or five times, however many, and then reinsert a new magazine, rack, and then reassess my threat. Um, under certain conditions, it may be wise to, uh, to use multiple racks, even if you see nothing come out, like under night vision. I, I can't near focus unless I readjust, so I may not see or feel or hear anything come out of that chamber. Um, if I'm working on grass or I'm working in a wooded area or there's just a lot of noise, I may not hear brass hit the ground, things of that nature. So I don't want to rely on a method necessarily that requires uh, tactile input or it requires visual input. What I want to do is use one method for one situation, maybe uh, modify that method for another, if that's what you want. Under night vision, I do tend to clear malfunctions a little bit differently just based on the environment. So how are we going to clear this? Well, I can lock the bolt to the rear. That I may attempt a failure to fire first, but when a double feed occurs, there's usually some kind of mass stoppage. Uh, I feel the bolt not go all the way forward. There's a mass stoppage. It doesn't feel like a normal cycle of operation. If I can diagnose it by the feel, I've just shortcutted attempting a push-pull rack. So if I can lock the bolt to the rear, which I should be able to, and then at that point, I'm gonna strip that magazine. If I don't have another magazine, I need to retain this. So I'm gonna go ahead and tuck it in a pocket or tuck it underneath my arm if I think I can make things work that way. And then I'm simply gonna drop the bolt and rack the chamber clear. See, I said something come out on the first one. I gave it another one just to be sure. I can then reinsert that magazine rack, reassess my threat, and he needs to be shot, shoot him. Uh, no need to get wrapped around the axle when it comes to the double feed. Um, some rifles will let you remove the magazine before locking the bolt to the rear, but that's not going to be consistent because some double feeds present in different ways, whereas this one, let me, this one may have let me do it, but if I have a true double feed, two actual bullets are in the chamber like this, I may not be able to strip that magazine, or if I do strip that magazine, it may pull the cartridge off of the bullet itself and leave that double feed in the chamber. So it's best, if possible, to lock that bolt to the rear, strip the magazine, rack to clear the chamber, reinsert the magazine, rack to load the rifle again, and then reassess. If you have a magazine to reload to, you can get rid of this one. But if this is the only mag you got, you need to hold on to it. And you definitely don't want to throw it on the ground for speed's sake because you're going to lose what speed you made up when you're hunting around for that magazine after you've cleared the malfunction. Again, if you have more mags, get rid of it. If you don't, you probably want to hold on to it during the malfunction clearing procedure. Now, another training method I can use to induce double feed like malfunctions is I can take a, a spent casing, insert it backwards into the magazine, uh, put as many rounds as you want on top of it. Um, if you want to make it as, as organic as possible, uh, you can take whatever media you're going to use to induce the malfunctions, such as spent casings, and go ahead and put them in your pocket uh, with live rounds and load from there. So you don't actually know if you're, if you're not cheating yourself where it's going um, or what number it's going to be in the magazine. Or if you have a practice partner with you, have them load your magazines. But with this, this is something that I can use to aid in my malfunction diagnostics and help me uh, learn to clear the malfunctions. So, Now what I have is a failure to properly feed. It's not quite a double feed, but it's also not a tap rack. The mass is going to feel differently. Can this occur? I see it happen on dirty guns where maybe the round just won't go in or the bolt doesn't completely close. And the forward assist, for all its good intentions, doesn't usually help in this situation. In fact, it's not going to help at all because the bolt carrier group is too far back. In this situation, my push-pull rack is not going to help. If I felt the mass, if I identified the malfunction by feel, um, then that's going to shortcut my ability to fix it. I'm going to get to it a lot quicker. You can do the roll and look, and now I can see directly into the chamber while still maintaining an eye on my threat, if that's the method you want to use. I can strip that magazine. If I need to keep it, I want to hold on to it, work it back, clear that media, and at that point I can reinsert the magazine and then reassess my threat. Uh, inducing a double feed in training is kind of difficult to do. 
uh, in real time. There's not too many things that you can even dummy rounds or putting casings in forwards or backwards empty casings uh, to induce a true double feed. Double feeds are just going to occur and when they occur go through the methodology. Now I know how to induce a malfunction on a student's gun in a class where I use what some people refer to as a malfunction stick. I simply just use a magazine. When the student is shooting I'll come in, I'll put it in the sweet spot and when they pull the trigger the next time it induces a malfunction. It's a apparently controversial method for training because they feel, some people feel like it's uh, teaching the student to ignore foreign media interfering with their rifle and my thought to that is well we, we need to isolate a skill and as long as a student has an understanding of that's what's going on then we're not really teaching them to ignore people trying to stick things in their gun so much as we're teaching them how to clear a full power malfunction versus setting up a best case double feed and clearing it from there. Now for a, for a more realistic but more almost like an atypical or maybe common malfunction, I'm going to put a magazine in, lock the bolt at the rear, I'm going to take two rounds and I'm going to attempt to put them both in the chamber at the same time and then I'm going to hit the bolt release. Blind. I don't know exactly what that looks like. I set it up but I didn't really pay attention. I know there's something going wrong in there. Then I'm going to get my ear pro on and I'm going to go ahead, feel that trigger, lock back, strip. If I, have, if I need this magazine, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to rack. I'm going to rack again maybe, if you feel comfortable or you feel like you need to. Then I'll be getting back on my th and shoot if I have to. Sometimes the best way to learn to clear double feeds is to have someone else set it up for you. Hand your rifle off to a friend or a partner, have them set it up. Um, again, I talked about uh, inducing malfunction with foreign media such as using a magazine or a stick or you can even put a gloved hand up there and induce uh, a double feed if you get your, get your hand right in the sweet spot to make the brass go back in the gun or to interrupt the normal cycle of fire. Uh, however you need to do it, try to do it in the most realistic fashion possible, but make sure you're isolating the skill set. Now the most catastrophic of the common malfunctions is brass over bolt, bolt override, whatever term you want to use. Uh, setting that one up realistically is actually pretty easy. It's actually easier than a double feed. I'm going to lock my bolt to the rear. I'm going to have a magazine with ammunition in it. Then I'm going to take a casing, empty casing. You can even use a live round if you want. I'm going to drop it in the rifle. I'm going to get the rifle completely upside down, get a cant on it, and then I'm going to hit the bolt release. Now I'm going to show you a close-up of what this looks like in a second. So as you can see, the brass is lodged above the bolt carrier, or I should say the bolt slash bolt carrier, up there in the gas carrier, or the charging handle slash gas key uh, channel. This is on face value a pretty catastrophic malfunction and I'll show you why. Now brass over bolt, bolt override, whatever term you're going to use, it presents as a double feed. If you feel it, the mass stoppage in the uh, the carrier, it feels like a double feed and you may attempt to clear it like a double feed. If you're going to do a visual, you may roll the gun and it, the bolt's locked to the rear, you're thinking okay I can kind of see maybe there's a round in the chamber bouncing back and forth because it's got room to move and you may think okay double feed so you may attempt to clear it that way but the first sign that this is not your traditional double feed and this is probably a bolt override is going to be the fact that I can't pull the charging handle all the way back. That's going to be a dead giveaway that this is not a run-of-the-mill double feed and it's probably a bolt override. If you want to take the extra step at that point you can roll the gun all the way inboard and see okay there is brass above the bolt. The old method of clearing this, the old way they used to teach people is they'd have them come out of sling, collapse the stock all the way in and then strike the heel of the stock against something to mortar the gun to assist in clearing it. Uh, another method was to use a foreign media to hold the bolt back so you could reach in there and screw around with the brass and try to get it out of the gun. Those methods work, they're just really, really slow and not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is just rapid motion and gravity. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to strip the magazine. I should be able to get it out. It's going to take a little bit more effort. It's not going to be like a double feed where sometimes double feeds just won't give it up. You'll be able to get it out of the gun. If you need it, retain it. If you don't need it, get rid of it because you don't have time to mess with it. And then I'm going to angle the gun down. I'm going to use my support hand thumb on the bolt, uh, the bolt catch. My other hand is going to come back to the charging handle and I'm going to work the charging handle and the brass just fell out. Um, the charging handle will assist in kind of knocking it out of that little pocket that it's in and then I can reinsert my magazine or reload a new magazine, hit my bolt release and now I'm ready to shoot. Now to give you guys kind of a different angle on that, uh, I can't lock the bolt back. Charging handle is kind of locked in place. It moves a little bit but I can't get it all the way back to lock it in place. That tells me immediately it's probably a bolt over. 
strip that magazine, retain it if I need it. If I don't, don't worry about it. Come underneath, maybe like that. Some people say, well, you shouldn't take your primary or your, your firing hand off the firing controls when you're clearing this malfunction. I think that's a matter of personal preference because it's going to take them out of the same amount of time. It's not really a good habit to get into, but if you feel like you can generate more motion to clear the malfunction by switching it up a little bit, maybe that's something you might want to think about doing. Maybe try it both ways. I don't know. Uh, but I still have to come underneath, still have to hit that uh, the bolt catch. I can do it with my support hand and then come back and work the handle here, or I can do it with my primary hand like that and come back and work the handle here. Either way, maybe keep my hand here to see if I can feel that brass fall out. There it is right there. At this point, I can reload my weapon, reassess my threat, and shoot if necessary. Now, I don't, I probably didn't blow too many mines like with any of these methods. Uh, well, maybe clearing the, uh, the bolt override. Some people, you may not have seen that before. Uh, mortaring. Back to mortaring. I had somebody ask me about mortaring. Mortaring does serve a pretty good purpose when it comes to clearing a stuck case in the chamber. Uh, it's one of the fastest ways to do it without having to involve other tools. Uh, it's not a foolproof method because the extractor is still the extractor and it's only got so much purchase on that casing. Uh, you have a stuck casing. Um, those are generally induced because the gun got hot, it got dirty, and then it cooled. You had a round in the chamber, be it in, you know probably a live round. It could have been an empty casing. Maybe you just didn't realize it. And you, in, you had a situation where you had a failure to extract. That's the only time mortaring really makes sense to me. Um, there are other ways to do it. If you have a hard surface, you can put the charging handle against it and just kind of kickstart the gun. Or you can kickstart the gun by holding the barrel out at an angle, putting your foot on that charging handle, and just go ahead and just like you would a motorcycle. Um, to me, mortaring is one of those things where if you have to do it, if you have no foreign media available to you, you've got limited space or something like that where you can't uh, get any leverage on the charging handle itself, then mortaring is a method that will work. Um, but again, it comes down to personal preference, environment, mission, and time. Um, as far as the other methods, I'm sure you've seen them before. Maybe I have a little bit, a little bit different take on them. Maybe you do them differently, and that's fine. Um, just always work towards the most efficient way. If my way seems to, if my way is different, maybe try it and see if it's faster and more efficient than the way you're doing it now. If it's not, then keep doing it the way you're doing it. Uh, I by no means want to replace an efficient method you may already be using. Uh, but if you feel like there's some inefficiencies in the way that you clear malfunctions, or maybe you just want to experiment with the ways that I do it, uh, by all means, uh, check them out and uh, let me know what you think. I'm Aaron Cowan with Stage Dynamics. Train accordingly.